The pangolin shown on the screen here may not look like any other animal that you are familiar with. However, scientists classify pangolins as mammals, the same group of animals that includes dogs, cats, mice, and humans. All female mammals have the ability to produce milk. Unlike pangolins, most mammals have hair. Scientists use key characteristics such as these to classify all living things. Chapter 18, Section 1. The Linnaean System of Classification. Key Concept. Organisms can be classified based on physical similarities. Main Ideas. Linnaeus developed the scientific naming system still used today. Linnaeus's classification system has seven levels, and the Linnaean classification system has limitations. First main idea. Linnaeus developed the scientific naming system still used today. Before Swedish botanist Carolus Linnaeus introduced his scientific naming system, naturalists named newly discovered organisms however they wanted. In fact, they often named organisms after themselves. Because they had no agreed-upon way to name living things, it was difficult for naturalists to talk about their findings with one another. This all changed in the 1750s, when Linnaeus devised a system that standardized the way organisms are classified and named. Taxonomy is the science of naming and classifying organisms. Taxonomy gives scientists a standard way to refer to species and organize the diversity of living things. Linnaean taxonomy classifies organisms based on their physical and structural similarities. Organisms are placed into different levels in a hierarchy, which is a multi-level scale in which each level is nested in the next higher level. In other words, each level is included in a larger, more general level, which is in turn included in an even larger, more general level. A group of organisms in a classification system is called a taxon, the plural taxa. The basic taxon in the Linnaean system is the species. In this system, species are most commonly defined as a group of organisms that can breed and produce offspring that can reproduce. Linnaeus's system gives each species a scientific name. With a few changes, this method of naming is still used today. Binomial nomenclature is a system that gives each species a two-part scientific name using Latin roots. The first part of the name is a genus. A genus, the plural is genera, includes one or more physically similar species that are thought to be closely related. For example, the, uh, the genus Kirkus includes more than 500 species of oak trees. Genus names are always capitalized. They are written in italics or underlined. The second part of the name is the species descriptor. It can refer to a trait of the species, the scientist who first described it, or its native location. Like the genus, the species descriptor is written in italics or underlined. However, it is always lowercase. The species descriptor is never written alone because the same word may be used in different genera. Kirkus alba is the scientific name for white oak trees. Alba means white. But Taito alba is the scientific name for barn owls. You may wonder why biologists use scientific names. It may seem easier to use such terms as white oak instead of remembering two-part Latin names, as we can see on the figure on the screen here. However, scientific names are helpful in many ways. 
First, genera such as Kirkus contain hundreds of species. Many of these species have similar common names. Scientific names allow scientists to talk about particular species without confusion. Also, remember that biology or life science is studied all over the world. One species may have several different common names even within a single country. Armadillidium vulgare is the scientific name for pill bugs. However, the species is also called roly-poly, sow bug, and potato bug. Scientific names allow scientists around the world to communicate clearly about living things. Second main idea. Linnaeus's classification system has seven levels. The Linnaean system of classification has seven levels, or taxa. From the most general to the most specific, these levels are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Each level of Linnaeus' system is nested, or included, in the level above it. A kingdom contains one or more phyla. A phylum contains one or more classes, and so forth. The classification of the gray wolf, Canis lupus, which is actually pictured uh, on your screen here, is shown moving down as the levels represent taxa that become more and more specific until you reach the species level at the very bottom only Canis lupus. The top level represents all of the species in kingdom Animalia. As you move down, the levels show examples of species from phylum Chordata, class Mammalia, order Carnivora, family Canidae, genus Canis, and the species Canis lupus. Each level is included in all of the more general levels above it. Notice that gray wolves are in the same genus, Canis, as dogs and coyotes. Because the Linnaean system is nested, is a nested hierarchy, wolves, dogs, and coyotes also belong to the same family, order, class, phylum, and kingdom. Foxes do not belong to the Canis genus, but they do belong to Canidae, the same family as wolves, dogs, and coyotes. Therefore, foxes also belong to the same order, class, phylum, and kingdom as wolves, dogs, and coyotes. Third main idea. The Linnaean classification system has limitations. Linnaeus created his classification system before technology allowed us to study organisms at the molecular level. His system focuses on physical similarities alone. Remember that physical similarities between two species are not always a, a, a result of close relation between species. Unrelated species can evolve similar traits through convergent evolution. Linnaeus' system does not account for similarities that evolved this way. So, today, scientists use genetic research to help classify living things. Genetic similarities between two species are more likely than physical similarities to be due to a common ancestor. For example, the giant panda and the raccoon have similar ears and snouts. Because of these similarities, they have been placed in the same family within the Linnaean system. However, molecular biologists have found that the giant panda is more closely related to members of the bear family than it is to raccoons. Furthermore, the red panda, which is shown on the screen here, is more closely related to the raccoon than to the giant panda. This video has been Chapter 18, Section 1, The Linnaean System of Classification. The key concept? Organisms can be classified based on physical similarities. Main ideas? 
Linnaeus developed the scientific naming system still used today. Linnaeus's classification system has seven levels, and the Linnaean classification system has limitations.